This tutorial focuses on ad hoc views, which are used to create basic reports and explore multiple levels of data through cross-tab, table, and chart visualizations. We'll take a look at these capabilities by creating an ad hoc view. Based on my security file, I see a list of available data sources. I can toggle a view between a flat list and folder view and type in a search string to quickly find data. For example, my application has Food Mart related data. I can mouse over items to see descriptions and folder path information. I select my data source, then hit OK to continue. The viewer contains a panel that lets you see all available fields and measures. You can select one or more items from the panel by using Control and Shift click keys and dragging them into row and column locations. I'll start by dragging sales and cost data into the view. By default, grand total data is shown in crosstab format. I'll then drag other fields into the layout panel to show multiple levels of aggregate data across column and row groups. By default, sample data is returned to improve performance when laying out the view. When I set the view to full data, I see the complete result set. You can expand and collapse row and column groups to explore various levels of aggregate data. Right-clicking on a column or row group heading lets me see various formatting options. For example, right-clicking on the total store cost column lets me sort values by store name and store country row groups. I can also sort column and row group labels by right-clicking on a heading, for example, sorting by country name. Fields and measures can be filtered to refine the view. Right-clicking on an item in the content panel lets me see various options, or I can select the Create Filter item. For example, when I create a filter for product name, I see a default filter value appear in the filter panel. I can select from various filter operators. For example, I want to select multiple values to filter by selecting is one of. Clicking in the value list lets me quickly select and deselect items. I can also enter type ahead search strings to refine the value list. In this case, I want to limit my view to light beer and turkey hot dog products. I can then look at the selected items tab to see the complete list of items selected for the view. When done, I hit the Apply button to update the view. Using the toolbar, I switch my view to a chart. By default, I see the highest level of data in a column chart. I can visualize various combinations of aggregate data by dragging the data level sliders. The chart type can be changed by selecting the settings icon. For example, I'll select a scatter chart. Mousing over any data point will show descriptive information, and dragging the mouse over a section of the chart will let you brush zoom to magnify the selected section of the chart. The designer also lets you create additional fields of measures with the Create option. I'll create a new measure that calculates margin percent data and then use the formula builder where I can paste fields and measures into the formula by double clicking from the list and selecting or typing in various operators. As I enter a more complex formula, I can use the validate button to ensure its syntax is correct. In this case, I need to do a nested group calculation by taking sales minus cost as a percent of sales. The Formula Builder also contains a list of functions to perform more advanced calculations on numeric, string, and date-based values. Clicking on any name shows a description and expected parameter list. When finished, I create the measure and now see that it appears in the content panel where I can drag it into the layout. Note that when a selected data set is not supported by a given chart type, that a help message appears in the canvas. I want to use a bubble chart to show the relationships between my three selected measures then drag to rearrange the items in the layout to change the visualization's perspective. I can also use the sliders to view various aggregate data relationships. I now want to review some data over time. I remove a few of the items from the layout and bring in the date field. The chart gallery lets you select from various time series chart types.
I can also set chart formatting. In this case, I'll change the legend location and format and data point display. I use the apply button to see my changes, then OK when finished. I can also hide and unhide series values by clicking on legend labels, and note that when I brush zoom on a time series chart, that the time series axis labels adjust accordingly. Filtering also lets you set up dynamic rolling period windows by defining relative date ranges. For example, I want to limit my analysis to the past three years of daily data. By using time keywords and offset periods, I create a rolling view. I switch back to a crosstab view to show you how you can also change the default aggregation of time series data. When I right click on the date field in the layout, I see the change grouping option. This lets me change the view to various time-based aggregates. For example, I want to change the aggregate of the data into date of week buckets. Let's take a look at tabular views. These let you look at detailed record level data. I can drag fields into the layout to show more data columns in each record and also group the records together by any number of fields. The table can also be set to display various combinations of detailed and totals data. Right-clicking on a column heading lets me change the summary calculation. For example, I want to see the average sales when I look at totals records. I can toggle back the crosstab mode and see that the average sales data is still displayed. I want to complete my view by looking at data by subcategory and state. I can also click to create a title for my view. And then save my view to a folder where it can be shared by others who have the appropriate security access to the folder. Ad hoc views can also be exported to various formats as needed for other report distribution and analysis needs. This concludes the ad hoc views tutorial. Next, check out the reports tutorial to see how users can interact with pixel perfect reports created with Jaspersoft Studio and also how to create ad hoc reports using report templates. Also, if you're looking to embed ad hoc views directly into your own web pages, check out the Jaspersoft Visualize.js material on Tipgo's GitHub.